In this chapter, we will cover the logical workflow and grasshopper definition of unrolling and extracting fabrication data from the BREP strips. We will require a separate plugin called OpenNest to assist with tagging and nesting of fabrication data. Follow these steps to install the plugin. Locate the plugin file in the downloadable resources shared with this course. Alternately, you may visit the Food for Rhino website and download OpenNest from there. Open the plugin folder and copy all the files. In the Grasshopper menu bar, go to File, Special Folders, Component Folders. This will open up the Library folder in your system's file manager. Paste all copied files into the folder. Check the properties of all copied files to see if any of these files are blocked. If they are, check the Unblock options and hit Apply. Repeat this process for all copied files. Once it's done, save your Grasshopper and Rhino file and restart Rhino software. Upon restarting Rhino Grasshopper, you will find the OpenNest plugin under the Params tab. Let's begin the workflow. In the previous chapter, we isolated warp and weft BREPS strips in two separate BREPS lists. In this chapter, we will set up a standard grasshopper definition to work with both lists. You may open the grasshopper reference file to follow along. Start with two lists of BREPS tagged warp and weft. Take the warp list and deconstruct it using the deconstruct BREPS component. Take the list of faces from the output and use shift list to shift each branch by one index. We do this because if we consider the loop strips, they usually split at the quad edge. So we get a slim gap at this point in both warp and weft layer. This happens for all loop strips and compromises the structural integrity of the final assembled geometry. Splitting the triangle at diagonal ensures that the split in the warp layer is supported by the face in weft layer. Shifting the face list by 1 ensures that the split line shifts from quad edge to diagonal edge. Once the face list has been shifted by one index, join the list again using BREPS join component. Collect the joined BREPS into a BREPS container component. Unroll the BREP. We notice that all three-dimensional BREPs have been unrolled into two-dimensional planar BREPs. To extract the fabrication's profiles, use BREPs edges component and isolate the naked edges. The naked edges comprise all the boundary curves of each flattened strip B rep and the curve profiles of all slots. Join the naked edges. For each branch, we have one polyline curve representing the boundary curve and multiple smaller polyline curve representing the slot curves.
Use the curve length function to extract the length of each polyline curve. Connect the length output to the sort list component and the polylines into values A. Sort list will sort the list of curves in ascending order of their length, and the last item in each branch is the boundary polyline. Use list item with an index value of negative 1 to extract the last item of each branch. This list of polyline curves is the main cut profile. Connect it to a curve container component and tag it as main cut profile. From the sorted list of curves, cull the last index by reversing the list. connecting the list to the cull index component and setting the indices value to zero. This gives us all the slot curves. Connect this cull index output into a curve container component and tag it as slot curves. For internal fold lines, use the list of interior edges from the list of B reps edges. Connect the interior edges into a curve container component and tag it internal fold lines. The final list of fabrication curves is the text curves used for tagging each triangular face of unrolled B reps. For this, we need a list of texts to describe the tags, and a list of planes to place the texts over each face. To extract the texts, take the list of 3D B reps strips and deconstruct them. This gives us a list of faces with 48 branches with multiple faces in each. Graft, simplify, and connect the list of faces into the tree statistics component. Paths output from the tree statistics component gives us a list of numbers that can be converted into text and used as tags. Pull up a panel to read the paths. The first number tells us the strip number that the triangular face belongs to, and the second number tells us the index of the triangular face. We can remove the curly brackets, and replace the semicolon with a hyphen using the split text component. Connect the text to the split text component, and use a panel with open curly bracket, semicolon, and close curly bracket as inputs for separators. This gives us four outputs for each text. Read it in a panel. The first and last item of each branch is an empty item. The second and third items of each branch are the strip number and face number, respectively. Use two list item, and isolate the strip number and face number, and flatten the lists.
Then use concatenate component and connect strip numbers into fragment A. Drop a panel with hyphen typed into it. Connect this panel to fragment B input. Use the plus sign to increase the number of inputs. Connect the face numbers list into the third input of concatenate function. The resulting output is a list of texts with strip number and face number separated by a hyphen. Together, this tagging system will help us identify the strip, as well as the individual triangle. The next step is identifying the plane for locating these tags on the strips. For this, we will identify a point just above the slot curve on each face. Start by deconstructing the unrolled B rep strips. Take the list of faces and deconstruct it again. Take the edges, output and join them into polylines using join curve. Use the curve length command to get the length of polylines. Sort the polylines using the length values. And the resulting values A gives a list of polyline curves that have the slot curves as first item and triangular boundary curve as the second item. Use list item to isolate the two items. Out of them, find the midpoint of the first item, using the polyline center function. This gives us the midpoint of slot curve. Find the closest point between this midpoint and the respective triangular curve using curve closest point. Construct a vector two point between the closest point and the midpoint. This will be used as y-axis for the construction of plane. Next, rotate this vector by negative 90 degree, or pi by 2 in radians. Use the default Z vector as the rotation axis.
The resulting vector will be used as x-axis for the construction of plane. For the origin point, move the midpoint by 1.5 unit in vector y direction. Use construct plane component and connect the origin point, x-axis and y-axis. Now that we have a list of 2048 planes and 2048 texts, we need a component that converts the text into curves and places it into the flattened unrolled B reps. Find the text component under the open nest toolbar and bring it into the canvas. Graft and simplify the location and text input without connecting anything to the text component. Connect the list of texts into the text input and the planes into location input. Set the size parameter to two units. Check the Rhino viewport and the, the text appears as curves over the strips. Connect the output curves into the trim tree component and simplify the input tree. This will ensure that all text curves belonging to a single strip is grouped under a single branch. Collect this trimmed list of curves into a single curve container component and tag it, text curves. Now, we have all the curves required for laser cutting of warp layer. Copy this entire definition and replace the initial input B reps list with the weft layer. And we get the fabrication curve data for the weft layer as well. In the next chapter, we will cover the nesting of these curves into rectangular boundaries representing the maximum size of the sheet material used for CNC laser cutting process.